I'm John Amdorf. I'm the mayor for another, I don't know, a week and a half or something. <laughs> Vicki? Oh, I'm Vicki Klein, council at large. Living Perry? I guess yeah. that's all. <laughs> um, Elizabeth Hicks, city clerk. Uh, Joseph Shelby, newly elected council person in Ward 1. Here. Newly elected. Newly. Newly elected. Yes. Barb Walling, Ward 3. Chuck Shop at large. Sven Peterson, city administrator. I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time to do the presentation and, and the tour today. I, I know it's a busy time, and especially with the added holiday week, so I really appreciate you doing this. Oh, no, we're happy to have you. Uh, we can so I'll, 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 I need to call sure, this meeting order make, make it official, I guess. Yeah, no problem. This may be my last meeting I call to order, so yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> we will call this work session um, meeting to, to order. Call the roll, please. Berkland? Walling? Yes. Schott? Yes. Klein? Yes. Mahler? Thank you. I need to have a motion to approve today's meeting agenda. So be it. moved. Second. <laughs> Call the roll, please. Klein? Yes. Shot? Yes. Walling? Yes. As you know, we only have one item of business that is a presentation, and two are first of all scientific. Thank okay. you. With that, we'll turn it over to you. Yeah, yes, you're thank welcome. You. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, Dan, if you want to hit the door, I'll, we'll just do introductions <laughs> to start. Uh, I'm Jake Oakland, I'm the president and CEO of First of All Scientific. I've got four, or sorry, three other members of my uh, senior staff in the room here. So, uh, Jamie, if you want to start, I'll let you. Yeah, I'm Jamie Jackson. I'm VP of Sales here at First Scientific. Dan Piquet from VP of Engineering. Joni Campanelli, VP of Marketing and Communications. Joni's also oh. the glue that made this event happen, so your thanks <laughs> yeah. go uh, her Thank way. Thank you, Joni. <laughs> And then I'll, I'll give you kind of the background, but I think the more interesting part in the room here will be Dan's. So uh, he, he does a lot of great things, and, and then Jamie really drives a lot of business into this place. So um, so thanks for coming. Um, I'm going to start to kind of give you an overview. But the first thing I, I'm going to do, and this is, Sven, you can't answer, you've heard this already. Um, but uh, I'd like to start with kind of a, a quiz question. And so we'll see. Some, we had some high school students here, and I was really impressed that they figured this out. Can any of you tell me what this is? Wow, very fast, very impressive. It is sharp, yes. Yeah. So then I'll extend it. Why would I ask you that question? That's where you began. That's where we began, wow. absolutely. Wow. So I've got, uh, Jody did a, a very nice storyboard here that we'll leave up in the back if you want to look at it. But uh, 1886, so we're 137 years old. And that's what we started with was butcher tools, hand tools, uh, just like that. And so then it was in Des Moines and then uh, moved to Boone in the 1950s. And really bulk, the bulk of the history, it, uh, first of all, moved into the commercial refrigeration products. So if you think the meat counter at Fairway, um, that was uh, the bread and butter for uh, many decades. Then in the 50s, <coughs> Iowa State approached Percival and wanted to build a chamber for research that controlled temperature. And uh, um, I don't know the rest of the details. That's what got us into what we do today, which is controlled environment chambers, predominantly for research, but there's more applications from there. Um, fast forward to late 80s, early 90s. Um, commercial refrigeration business was pretty tough, and so Percival made the decision to focus exclusively on controlled environment chambers. I'll explain those a little bit more uh, here shortly. In 2000, um, Percival moved from Boone here to this facility in Perry. It was a spec building, so when they first moved here, they kind of added some things, office space expanded a little bit. And then just last year, we did another expansion, or we, I, would, I should say we, we put it into production uh, it was uh, started well prior to that. COVID, as you can imagine, slowed that down uh, a little bit. But um, yeah, so that's really the, the history of what we do. Um, I'll talk more about our products um, and then a little bit about the factory uh, and, and the company more generally. So in terms of products, I say controlled environment chambers. What the heck is that? Um, if they look like, by and large, um, we make reach-in chambers and walk-in chambers. 
The reach-in chamber looks like your refrigerator. Um, some of our engineers don't like if I say this, but layman terms uh, is easy. We make refrigerators on steroids and then some. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a very sophisticated product that we can very tightly control temperature, humidity. We can add humidity. We can remove humidity. Uh, we also have very sophisticated lighting, which I won't go into because Dan's going to do kind of a light show um, to uh, show you that a little bit better. We also can control airflow to then control those factors. We can add CO2, which in some cases is food um, or plants. Um, and then we also have a number of other things that we can do. Uh, our niche, uh, we are in some cases a custom shop. In other cases, we have preset models and options, but we have a lot of uh, abilities to adapt our products to different customers' needs. We build almost everything is, is made to order. Uh, so we don't do a lot of stocking. We've got a little bit in the case where some customers may need chambers quickly, um, but otherwise uh, we take the order and then process it through design. In some cases we have to design a lot of it um, before um, or after receiving the order, I should say, uh, and then we build everything here uh, at our facility in Perry. So we've got a couple um, reps out in the field, but otherwise everything in terms of Percival Scientific is here on site. Um, in terms of our uh, kind of product breakdown, um, incubators, plant growth chambers, and walk-in chambers. The walk-in chambers can be incubators or plant growth. Most commonly, they are plant growth. Uh, some of the applications, I should say, the applications of what our customers do are endless. Um, we're providing the tool for whatever type of research they want to do. Um, plant growth is the most common, so I think Iowa State, they've got a very large horticulture department. They've got a whole bunch of our chambers to study corn, soybeans. A really common one is a rabbit optic, <coughs> which is a mustard plant that has a lot of scalability in the research world. On the incubator side, it can be bugs. It uh, can be a lot of different things. One specific one, a word I didn't know two years ago, but now we hear it all the time, is Drosophila. It's a fruit fly. It's got a remarkable amount of similarities in traits to human beings and the life cycle is really short, they grow really fast, and so it's fantastic for research purposes. Um, so that's a little bit about what we do. Um, on the tour, so if you were here maybe a month or two ago, you would have seen four giant chambers, one that's uh, I think 12 plus feet tall, giant roll up doors um, that we made for BASF. Uh, they uh, are going to use that for not research, but rather priming of watermelon seeds. They need a really specific temperature held tightly, and then a really high humidity, Jamie, is it 90? 93 and a half percent. 93 and a half, so go a little bit higher and it's raining um, in that chamber. Um, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of moisture in there for the seeds. Priming a watermelon seed, what that means is it's starting to germinate, and they can then offer a seed that cuts a month out of the growing cycle for their farmers that grow watermelons. Plus, kind of like corn, evidently it's really important to have even emergence in the watermelon plants so that they grow at the same time. We were the people that could do that for them. <coughs> and then we also just shipped the largest chamber we've ever built here on site that, you gotta help me again, Jamie. Almost 30 by 30, excuse me, 30 feet by 30 feet. So, bigger than this room in one dimension and almost as big in another dimension. Um, I don't even remember what they're doing in that chamber. Um, and so there's stories upon stories, and if there's time at the end, maybe we, we'd share one of those videos, videos with you, but otherwise check out our YouTube page. Um, you know, what we do is really cool. What our customers do is even more exciting. So that's really neat. Um, in terms of what we, ah, one of the pieces, we're also all over the world. So I'm not gonna read all the countries, but we've sold in 80 different countries um, in the world. In terms of our breakdown, our domestic business is much bigger. If you look over the last 15 years, it's about 70% domestic, 30% uh, export, which is still quite a bit to export. Lately, since COVID, the international market has recovered more slowly and is more challenged for us, so that number has come down. Nevertheless, it's still a big uh, part of our business. So I'm excited to, to tell you, actually, this is very fresh. Just two weeks ago, we accepted this award that's kind of a mouthful, um, U.S. Commercial Service Export Achievement Certificate. Wow. So they, 
recognize our um, success in the uh, international business along with we've utilized a lot of their tools and partnered with them to uh, overcome challenges, obstacles, and generally have success in that space. About Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. <laughs> it is not the first. Uh, Joni uh, represented us uh, seven years ago, I believe, with the E Award, and that was at uh, the Capitol uh, in Washington. So uh, the export market, Joni actually set the vision 15, uh, a little more years ago, that we're going to be in 80 countries, but we are. So that worked out. <coughs> and then one more piece we also got nominated for the Small Business Administration of Iowa Exporter of the Year. So fingers crossed that we get that one. Um, <laughs> so that's um, kind of a little bit about our, our customers, our markets. In terms of our team, we've got 86 employees, um, 84 of them come and work here. Two of them are field sales uh, territory managers and we're, we're uh, hiring a, an additional one here hopefully soon. Um, in terms of the work that our people do, uh, the neat thing about our team is we take it start to finish. So Joni uh, talked about she's marketing, so she's the one putting the materials out there or working with different agencies to uh, market our products and build our brand. We're really proud of our brand and we generate a lot of sales purely because of the brand. Jamie does sales, he's got a team that uh, takes, uh, does the prospecting, takes in those calls, books the orders. Um, Dan's in engineering, uh, after we get booked the sale, the folder goes down the aisle and we either design the chamber or put together what pieces need to make up that chamber. From there, we've got a couple folks in purchasing that buy the materials that we need. We do manufacture quite a few materials in-house, but we purchase uh, quite a few things, both domestically and internationally, so we do that part as well. And then from there, a few other uh, pieces come into it. It goes to our, our factory floor. And then we've got uh, also finance in-house, obviously, and a few other uh, administrative positions. In the factory, what you'll see, uh, it starts with a laser. And when I say laser here, I'm talking sheet metal laser that cuts the sheet metal into very specific pieces and sizes. Uh, since our products are unique, uh, there's not a lot of off-the-shelf componentry from that standpoint. We've got a couple of press breaks that will form or bend the material into the shape that we need it to be for the particular design. Uh, we've also got welding. It's pretty light duty welding because uh, all of our welding is cosmetic for, for the appearance, um, but we do, do have that. We did just purchase a, a laser welder, which we're really excited about because it's a lot, um, just a better process in general. We've got a paint department. Another joke that we give, you can order any color you want as long as it's white. You know, so. <laughs> Uh, we do have a, it's a powder paint system that we paint uh, all, all things internally white. Um, and then after that, it's a whole lot of assembly work. We've got sub-assembly as far as putting together control lights, um, different things like that. Um, we've got the final assembly where we're putting the chamber together that you'll see. Uh, and then we've also got refrigeration. So in that case, we buy compressors and motors and things to, to uh, put those, um, to allow that feature for the temperature control and then our people are putting together the unique specifics of the plumbing there, lighting torches and, and, and sweating joints together. Um, and then we've got, of course, material handling for uh, that coming in, and we've got shipping as well. So um, the expansion almost doubled the footprint of the factory. Uh, that went online early 2022, so we're not quite two years fresh there. We really hit our stride with that this year, and I'm also excited to say we've got more growth into that space. Um, our growth this past year has been tremendous. Uh, COVID was a challenge, a challenging time, a little bit of a setback, and we're excited to have put that in the rear view mirror um, where we have really uh, made up that ground and, uh, and then some beyond that. I won't give you any specific numbers, but it's been a tremendous year and we're all very proud. And so that also means that we are hiring. So I know your community members, if you have anybody looking for a job? We've got our posting for production positions. You know, assemblers is the biggest um, group of people that we have, but people doing fabrication work, welding, uh, uh, a little bit of paint, uh, kind of all the above there. Um, the posting just never comes down, and it's not, uh, uh, it's intentional because we're growing, we're trying to do that steadily. Uh, we can't take 20 people tomorrow because training here is is a challenge because our products are so unique, but nevertheless, um, definitely so. Uh, there's some handouts at the back. 
welcome to take some of those uh, if anyone. Um, what skill levels are required for, for employment here? I will say we're open to looking at anyone. Um, if there's some background in mechanical, um, that's great. Uh, if anybody's got some electrical or refrigeration background, great. Uh, when you come here, we have to teach uh, all the specifics, and so some of those skills can be uh, translatable. Um, my requirement is a great positive attitude and a willingness to work with others and contribute and show up every day. Uh, the rest of the stuff we can absolutely teach. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, we've got a great team and I'm excited that we're growing. Um, let's see. You have pretty good employee retention then? Yes, we do. Um, it's, uh, that's really been a strength. We've got double digit, I can't remember the exact number, but more than 10 out of our 85 that have been here more than 20 years. Wow. Uh, our longest tenure has been here 50 years. My predecessor was here for 49 years. Um, Joni, 21, Dan, 23, uh, Jamie, six, me just a year, so we're, I guess we're the rookies. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <coughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of good tenure here uh, in the positive thing. And then we've got a, at least a third that are less than two years because um, we've uh, grown really a lot over the past year, 18 months. Jake, sure. uh, question about your future growth. Is this area right here going to be okay for you to go I mean, yeah. with crowd gym? No, we're fine. Our owner is actually forward looking. Uh, so we're privately owned by a husband and wife out in New York. Uh, they've owned the company for exclusively more than 20 years and they've been, they were partial owners for I think 10 something like that before that. So they they love this company, they, they see it as a hidden gem, they fly out once a quarter. Um, and so they had the foresight of, we bought the 10 acres to the west. Um, so we don't know exactly what the future will hold, um, but uh, there's there's uh, parameters there that will absolutely support that. So the simple answer to your question is yes. Um, this is a good place for us. What other questions before we're going to show a quick video uh, and then Dan will give kind of a lighting demonstration, but uh, on the overview piece, any other questions? Or anything I missed that I normally cover because <laughs> you've heard me do this. Okay, great. Um, I'll invite Joni up then to play a quick video that uh, kind of explains uh, what we do a little bit better. Um, yeah, so I'll set these in the back. And then also, like I said, there's there's handouts back there. There's more pens if you want to give to a friend. Um, and then, uh, yeah, once we get into the tour, uh, be a lot more to come from that perspective as well. It's pretty fresh as well. So the. If you notice, uh, as that might Dan to come up here, you saw a chamber with a door rolling up. That was the watermelon seed one that we, we just shipped it a month ago. And then also with it was the, the very giant box. I called it the big box and the big doors um, were those chambers. So it was full packed. Right now it looks a little empty because we're transitioning to the next one. Where is so. that watermelon seed one? Idaho. Um, I don't remember the... Parma. Parma. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna let Dan take it over with us. We break it down. Uh, so I'll give you the next layer of detail. The reach in chambers we put on skids and they can ship as is. The walk in chambers we build complete, we test them fully to make sure they're functional and we can work through any um, any issues here. And then we break them down into modular components, ship them on a flatbed. And then they get, we have an installation crew that then okay, settles them at the customer. We do the installation. Yes, yes we do. Make sure that it all goes back together the way it should. Absolutely, and it's much more efficient if you can put together large uh, pre-assembled modules than the entire uh, thousands of nuts and bolts that go into a large chamber. Nice. All right, take it away, Dan. All right, I think I, you're getting pretty good at this. I'm not taking that to what you, uh, what you, what you said there. And Joni, every time I watch the video, I get excited. I know. Oh, yeah, so, I know. Being a part of this organization, um, Jake mentioned I've been here 23-ish years. Um, started out as a design engineer, kind of worked my way up through the company, um, and now I oversee the 
the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the engineering team. Um, I will add, since I've been here, I've really grown to appreciate um, just this community, the people in it, the partnerships that we have, and I'm really excited that we're, we're doing more outreach like this lately. Credit to Jake and, and kind of his vision for um, integrating more into the community. Uh, I think that's, that's really nice to see. I'm excited to see where that leads. Uh, yeah, this is a this is a great place to work, um, and I'm excited to see the growth and uh, what it will what it will mean for this community. Um, so yeah, as Jake mentioned, uh, we we do a lot of um, special uh, designs here. We basically make stuff that you can't get um, anywhere else. Um, our our motto is we we help create better science. So science is always kind of on the cutting edge of, of new things, new ideas, and we we don't um, we don't do the science, but we provide the tools that let the researchers create the better science and do what they want to do. Um, and so our long partnership with the research community has helped us learn what they need in order to do this. And one of our big differentiators is our lighting system. Um, Jake mentioned we do a lot of plant growth um, and with insects. Those all live out in, in nature. And so what we try to do is bring nature inside of our environments. And one of the hardest things to do is to bring the sun inside. Um, you know, the sun is very bright, takes a lot of energy. Um, it has a very specific wavelength and produces a lot of heat. So if you want to put enough lights into an environment to make it as bright as the sun, you have to remove all that heat. That, that kind of has a compounding effect of how do you maintain humidity, how do you keep the, uniform, the environment very uniform. Um, so those are kind of the things that we have to consider when we design these um, uh, environments. Um, over the past five years or so, there's been an, um, an amazing um, improvement in the LED technology that's available. We were one of the first um, companies to put LEDs in controlled environments. We start, we've been doing it since the late 90s. Uh, we have a partnership with NASA. Uh, and since then, we've, we've continued to evolve the product over the last five years. It's really um, hit this critical mass where it is our core um, lighting component in all of our products now. And um, We've learned that you can do some really neat things with light as it applies to research. Um, specific wavelengths can create uh, different responses in biological um, organisms. For instance, um, on the Drosophila, if you expose them to red light only, they can't see that, and so they can be um, monitored in a dormant state and manipulated um, under red light to let the researchers um, work with the uh, organisms without disturbing them. Uh, with regard to uh, plant growth, specific colors will make the plants do specific things. So if you give them uh, a very specific red peak, um, it makes the, the leaves grow bigger. Uh, if you give them blue light, it makes the stems um, grow thicker. And if you give them far red, which is almost at the edge of what the human eye can see, we can make them flower and do different things. And so, um, researchers use the lights to um, get different uh, phenotypic responses from the plants so they can study what those are and learn the mechanisms that, that cause them to change. So I'm going to light up one of our display units here. Um, we have a new uh, product we call Cybright. It's got uh, eight colors. I'll take a minute to start up here. Okay, so then as we segue, I'll say, so the other clarification, so Dan, we've got a lot of engineers on set. We don't have any researchers or scientists. That's who our customers are. Maybe the closest person to that is gonna give you the tour. That's it, <laughs> that's, uh, make, make you out to be a scientist, Carl. But, um, so Carl Lundy, I'll introduce him. He's the guy with the safety glasses, which you all will wear as you go through the tour. 
uh, also been here a long time, 23 years. You were here the first day of this facility, right? Yeah, that was my first day here, was also personal for me. So Carl has a tremendous background as it relates to our field um, and works in kind of the marketing space with Joni and helping our customers will come to us with problems that we like things that they're doing and we're trying to figure out how how do we design it, what do we provide, and that's a key piece that Carl provides amongst many things. So if you're curious on more of the applications uh, or, or what happens with the different chambers, because you'll see similarities, but then if you do look harder, plenty of differences because there's a lot of uniqueness. So um, we'll transition to that from a timing perspective. Uh, we're back in here around 11.30, is that right? Um, I'll do that, sure. Spend, yep. Okay. Okay, so we'll target that. Um, Carl's got safety glasses. I just ask you to be mindful of, of our employees. You can certainly interact with them. I'm sure you know people that work here, so uh, chat with them. Uh, just be safe. Uh, we don't have any major hazards here. Um, just some tools and, and a lot of sheet metal products, so uh, watch out for, for sharp edges and things like that. Yeah. And, and learned a lot. I, I know I have. I, I really appreciate your yeah, time. Sure. Yes. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you so Did much. You Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. And last but not least, having no further business, we stand adjourned right. at about uh, 11.50 or something like that. Okay. Ten years almost over.